So this is going to be a quick overview of Subaligner version 2. That way, if you are getting into it for the first time, you should have an easier time getting going. Now, it's all the same stuff. It just gives you quick, easy alignments, but the interface is a little bit different. So let's take a look at that. First of all, if you are a version 1 user, you still have to create a new account. Okay, so you either need to do that over here on the registration page with email and password, or a little bit quicker might be just using Google. Okay, right away you'll see that this is, looks a little bit different, right? So instead of drop down menus, we now have an entire list. And so we can quickly just click through on this list. And I'm making some specific choices here, which I'll explain to you in a second. So notice that I'm on speaker two and I'm gonna select K1SB and then I'm gonna select my preset and you're expecting it now to take me to the distance measurements, but instead it keeps going and it says, hey, what about speaker three? Well, this is new. So one of the new things in Subaligner is that we can now have more than one source in our alignment. And this is to accommodate things like the L Acoustics preset guide, where in the L Acoustics preset guide, it says, hey, you combine, combine this speaker with this speaker and this speaker. And I wanted to be able to import everything from the L Acoustics preset guide, among others. Uh, and so I wanted to add this functionality. And so that's why uh, if you get here to speaker three, it's because it has more sources. But maybe you didn't want this option with three sources. Maybe you wanted the one with two. So you say, how do I get that? So just look down here, there's a button. This will basically show you all of the filtered pre-alignments. And this is probably the one you wanted. It has two sources here instead of this one that has three. Here you see it says manufacturer. That means this is manufacturer official data that I either got directly from the manufacturer or from one of their uh, resources or PDFs and imported into Subaligner. And I wanna start giving people that option because I do believe that the alignments created within Subaligner are very accurate, but you might just always wanna know what the manufacturer official data is. And so that's in here now. Otherwise this will say Subaligner. And this just has my name because I created it. So in the future, as I add features that allow other people to create alignments, then your name will show up here. Okay, so we've got our pre-alignment selected and now we get to this new page, but I'm gonna skip over this for a second and come back. Let's just cover all the stuff that is, you know, stuff from the version one app. So here we're gonna enter our distances and the you know, number of elements in the system, just like we did in the version one app. Um, so a cheat code is, is that you hit, if you hit the Z key while you're on this page, it'll just hit zero, enter zeros and everything. This is mainly just for me because as I'm testing the app, or maybe I just want to see, um, the pre-alignment values without any distance offsets, then I might just want to qu quickly move through here. So we get to our results and that's it. Very similar to the past, except that now we have, uh, this delay and polarity values for each source here and not just one of them. Hopefully this will be more clear for people. You'll notice here that I've removed the level offsets. Those are here in a new page because I wanted to make it more clear that the level offsets are really just a starting point and you should really use your ears or an audio analyzer to set the level between things. This final page is just like it was in version one where you have some uh, test signals here that you can play through the sound system. The history page is pretty much the same, everything that you've done in the past, and you can open it up again and rerun a new alignment, and same thing with the speed of sound. Okay, so I skipped over the alignment position page, so I'm gonna go back to that. Um, there's a lot to talk about here, but just to give an overview, you have two options here. Uh, three, let's say three options. Number one, it's totally optional, so you could just skip over this. But if you would like some guidance, around where to place your, your microphone or how to choose an alignment position, then you can go through and fill out this form. It's super simple if you have this kind of a sound system that looks like this, and it's a little bit more complicated, just more fields here to fill out. If you have a sound system that looks like this, the big benefit to using this is that if you enter these values here, then it's gonna calculate the distances automatically for you. And in fact, if you're using 
the choice that I just made, then you can't even change these values anymore. So you would have to go back here and then choose skip the distance if you want to change those values. And then if you choose left, right, and you fill out all these fields and you get to the next screen, it'll also estimate those values for you, but then you can change them. So I'll make some more videos in the future that dive deeper into each of these topics. Um, this one is really interesting, for example, why it is that all you need to know is the sub depth relative to the mains, and then you don't need to calculate distances anymore. It's a pretty cool little discovery I made just by playing around with some different calculators. So that was the fastest overview of Subaligner version 2 that I could do. Um, I'm sure this raised a lot of questions for you, but I also hope that it piqued your interest to try it out. And please let me know what questions or suggestions come up for you. Thanks.